Check this out. <laughs> Arizona man accused of threatening to kill Trump nabbed after manhunt during former president's border visit. Apparently, Trump says he wasn't even aware the manhunt was going on. Also, apparently, I guess this guy is a, is a pedophile. Is that is that correct? He failed to register as a sex offender. Oh, so that could maybe be something else. Uh, but he's probably a pedophile. Yeah. Six six year old be, male. It could be adult. Yeah, that's what I mean. It could yeah, be. Yeah. But like, you know, I don't know. And then Trump was talking to a reporter in Arizona and he says they don't want me standing here. Yeah, I'll just play the clip. This is this actually, it's 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 kind of scary, but it's kind of funny. Obviously, an assassin yeah. tried to kill you. Yeah. The, the you know sheriff what? Can right I tell now? you something? Sure. We're in danger standing here talking. So let's not talk any longer. No, I know about it, but they don't want me standing here. They don't want you standing here either. Have a good time. Thank you very Thank much. You. Peace wow. mode. I mean, this is kind of crazy cuz it's like a month ago Someone literally shot Trump in the head, the side of the head. I know it just sounds crazier, but it was his ear. And the crazy thing, too, is how people think it was staged. They think that Trump set it up and it was like the shooter was intentionally aiming for his ear. You know, it's all these people who say, well, if you have someone ro robbing your house, just shoot the gun out of their hand. It's yeah, these types right, of people right. on, on, on. But apparently they did. What do you mean? The, the local police did shoot the rifle. Out of oh, sure, hand. sure. But my, my, the broader point is, I'm sorry, um, if... The corporate press was as concerned about this as they are about like climate change. Like that would be a normal response. The fact that they kind of shrugged their shoulders and moved on is extremely disturbing to me. And I, I have Alex Jones's tinfoil hat on the wall in my house next to your beanie. Um, <laughs> you've seen it in my house. I've seen it. And I don't think errors of this magnitude are made lightly. It's not possible. I, I, because I, it's impossible. I'm, I'm not a gun person, but. I know enough. If I was saw that stage to scope out where the possible oh, I mean, it's, it's not it's it's not just it that was, it's that they they have photos of the shooter walking around with the rifle. Yeah. So he was there, and they were like, "Oh, hey, look, that guy," and no one did anything about it. Yeah, he doesn't look creepy at all. Mm -hmm. It's like it's, get a gun, right? It's, and, and immediately, just you stop the guy, but they did not. They like, let him do it. It's not. I would say it's technically not impossible, but it is so unlikely that that was just an oops. Yeah, but here's the thing. It deserves thing. a let's, let's just, I'm sorry, because it is impossible. Talk, let's just, I'm sorry, let's, it is. Let's steal man this. If we're running a restaurant and you serve chicken and some kid goes to the hospital because the chicken was undercooked, we're freaking the hell out and we're like, all right, we got to look through every step because this can never happen again. And that's the only thing we're talking about is how did this happen? What's our workflow? That doesn't seem to be the case here. Yeah, this this would be more like, a kid goes to the hospital after eating raw chicken, which somehow affected him within 40 minutes. And then he like spazzes out, collapses, and we go, whoa, what happened? And then every every member of the staff is like, well, we did see a guy walking around with a, a jar that labeled arsenic, and he was spritzing it on the chicken, but we didn't do anything about it. We fired I'd the be chef. Like, I'd be like, yeah, that wasn't an accident. Right. You Like, he came in, and you guys, that's, 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 you are complicit. Yes. Like, a guy is, so a guy, when, when your job is to make sure a guy doesn't come in with weapons to try and kill the president and you release him from holding. You know there's a threat. People are screaming at some. Come on. Okay, how about this? Let's try Michael's analogy. A guy, a kid eats raw chicken and then falls. No, no. How about let's, let's just say he eats peanuts. Okay, he's allergic to peanut butter and he goes, ah, and he falls down. We're like, how did peanuts get in his food? This is crazy. And then the people you hired specifically for the purpose of making sure right, right. that this kid doesn't eat any peanuts. Right. That's, yeah, that's the peanut job. We're like, right. yeah. mm -hmm. that's right. A guy came in carrying a big bag, bag of peanuts. We noticed it, and we said it was fine. People started screaming, he's got peanuts. He's going to put peanuts in his food. And we were like, don't worry about it. And then the guy walked over and shoved peanuts in the kid's mouth. That's how it happened. You'd be like, right. were you in on it? Yeah, why and then they say, well, we're investigating it right now. Like, we're looking into it. We'll get back yeah, we to you on how this happened. Investigate ourselves and found the wrongdoing. I, I also want to add, we don't even need to use the peanut allergy. It's just getting convoluted. Mm -hmm. A guy was walking around with a rifle yeah, at yeah. Trump's rally and Secret Service like, that's fine. <laughs> I don't believe it. And here's the better part. OK, and I mean that facetiously. When the guy was walking around with a gun and Secret Service is like, meh, so what? They didn't care. When the guy opened fire, they didn't even respond first. Local law enforcement did. Then Secret Service That's fired. where the story gets really crazy. That's where it's like Secret Service was letting him do this. Like, just hands but, down. And then they get to continue on their way, right? It wasn't That's like anyone got moved off. Everyone who has Secret Service protection maintained the same, as far as I know, the same Secret Service protection. Except for maybe Trump when he walked out surrounded by men instead of women at the RNC a couple I, days I don't later. understand why he he's, has the money. I don't understand why he doesn't hire su supplemental, supplemental private security. I, I hope I that he, he has does. and he hasn't That's talked about it. That's okay, yeah. yes, smart. That's probably right. Yeah. Ian, you're right. They're undercover. You're absolutely right. That's the move. You're right. Stupid me. Yeah, no, Ian's correct. Uh, that's how, that's how we operate. Yeah, when we make security upgrades, we don't tell people what our security upgrades were. 
Yeah, people except for the person who put gum under our table, we oh. have we have twenty four seven surveillance camera, We're and we will find you. you, and we will publish the footage. Yeah, it's probably Dave Smith. <laughs> Throw your gum out before we go live. As right before we went live, Michael noticed there was gum under the table. Someone stuck. and it tasted terrible. It was blue. I know. <laughs> yeah, you know who you are. Dry. You Michael can watch the video of someone speaking who has blue tongue. I, mean, I think it was like, like a mint. It wasn't like a bubble. It's not going to stay in their tongue. Oof. Oof. Good forensic exa examination. Good. I, I'm a gum there. person. I know the texture. Big so gum. Well, let me ask you, Michael, because I mean, we, we've all talked about the Trump assassination stuff at nauseum. But, you know, you said you're, you've, you, you got your tinfoil hat on. Who do you think? Wh what do you think is behind this? And, and, and I'll, I'll say this, too. So, you know, I can just tell you where I'm at. Some official capacity wanted Trump to die that day. Some some official. My my, my uh, I said this when we were at the RNC right after it happens. Do people, uh, so the three questions, does Trump derangement syndrome exist? Sure. Of course it does. Uh, are there people, uh, uh, what, what was the second one I said? Um, are there people who were happy that this attempt on Trump's life happened and have expressed remorse that they didn't succeed? Absolutely. There's been man on the street interviews. And the third question is, is it possible that some of these people might work in government? Well, of course, absolutely. All of these things are one for one. So the idea that there could be someone in an official capacity in the Secret Service that wished that actually happened to Trump is probably extremely high, especially considering I think it was McNabb who said several uh, members of federal uh, intelligence agencies are expressing their intent to flee the country if Trump wins. So my position is the likely scenario in the Trump assassination is some official capacity. Have you ever I'll, I'll give you my answer. Have you ever had Jessica Tarlov on the show? No, she's a great lefty. She's on Fox, which is like in the lion's den. I don't think they're allowed to come on the show. Maybe. OK, yeah. I just I, I had her on my show. I, I, I'm a big fan of hers. I think she's fights for her issues in our articulate and in sincere. I was way. praising her this morning. actually. Yeah. So I had her on my show and, and we're talking about the Clinton. It's like the so-called Clinton hit, hit, uh, death list or hit kill list. And I said to her, I go, if I'm a president and I genuinely believe that it's important for me to stay in office and my opponent will cause harm to this country. And I'm responsible for causing wars, in which case armed men and women are going to die for my country. And I have those blood on my hand, but that's the responsibility I take. Why wouldn't I hypothetically just take out one person who I thought was a problem to what I think is best for America? If I can handle a war, what, I can't handle one? And she's like, yeah, you're right. Like she, she was like, okay, that logic makes sense but to it, me. It, so hold on, so in, in this context, I completely agree with you that the, the so-called – look at um, J. Edgar Hoover. He had more power than many presidents. They would have to bend the knee to him. The, all, all our phones are tapped. They have compromise on pretty much any politician because you're not going to get to watch them without being highly corrupt. And I, I don't think any of this is really kind of in dispute. So I don't know if it was – I don't think it was planned, but I think you, if I'm the guy playing chess – I could set up the board that's like, I'm just going to leave these weaknesses and let things happen. Let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. So that's uh, my position. The way I explained it is it's actually much more simple than people realize. Now, finding someone who's crazy and would actually pull off a stunt like this is an operation indeed. But it's just rolling dice at a certain point, they're going to present if, themselves. If they do it every time, right. all you have to do is whoever is organizing Secret Service, say there's five points of uh, five vantage points. They then tell everybody, hey, I'm going to be assigning you your security position. We have five vantage points. I'll let you know where to go. Each of these individuals has no idea what other people are doing or what they've been assigned. Right. You can comp compartmentalize right. it very easily. So when no one is securing that building, even though law enforcement requested it four days in advance, all it takes is one, someone in logistics right. to have not assigned someone to the position. Then they, the question is, but people were screaming, he's got a gun. How did Trump get released from holding? So they knew the guy was there. They have Trump in the holding position, which is a secure area before they release him. How did he get released? Simple. One person in logistics. They call and say, is the threat clear? And they go, yep, you're all good. All it takes. Yep, we're good. Send, not, send Trump on out. But you, you know how else I think your theory holds credence? Because these, for, when I was a kid, you know, showing my age, the whole point of the Secret Service is your job is to someone's firing, you're, jump, you're taking that bullet, you're taking that knife. Like, they get trained for that. Like, I'm taking my life for the sake of the president. Um, it does not seem that when this went down, no one went on TV and is like, I take pride in this organization. The Secret Service has been protecting presidents for decades. This has destroyed our name. I take full responsibility. Like they should, they should be on the verge of tears. Yeah. Because again, this is they. It's like Marines or any of these other like high or like the, the, the Navy SEALs. They take themselves so seriously, and that brand is so important to them. The brand is dead. But you would think. But if the brand, they would be like, this can never happen again. I'm so sorry. 
as much transparency as possible without in, in, you know making someone in danger in the future, but be like, I, I resign. This is on my shoulders. No. I, I, I accept responsibility. Instead, I'm, we got uh, Kim Cheadle who said, the buck right. stops with me, except also local police was in charge of that building, which is bizarre anyway. She was immediately shifting blame away from right. the organization. She repeatedly said she wouldn't resign. Obviously, she did. Uh, and I think that speaks to sort of institutional rot within the Secret Service. Because, you know, you get members of like the Trump, and Trump family at praising individual, you know, agents saying they've been on my family's detail, we're close to them, whatever else. But the fact that the overarching leadership of this basically did nothing, she didn't even hold a press conference. Then she, right. Cheadle's first appearance was an ABC interview. That's how they view this as their ability and, and, to become and Tim, We know uh, this is true because in 2020, all these uh, law and order figures sat in their hands while those cities burned. Yeah. So they were perfectly happy to see lots of people's lives get destroyed if it further their agenda. Oh, 30 yeah. plus deaths. This is what I'm wondering because like. Firebombing the Ch St. John's Church, firebombing the White House grounds. The utilitarian warmongers are like probably thinking, OK, they love Trump out of the way so that we can re-engage in the Middle East fully without any resistance. But if he dies, then his base is going to erupt in a few Fury, and we might have a civil war in our hands. We don't want that. But then if it's an external force that doesn't give a crap about the United States, they'd be happy to see it erupt I, into a civil I, I war. I slightly disagree because if, God forbid, a president gets or a former president who's running for office gets taken out, that is a great excuse for authoritarians to be like, all right, we're cracking down Patriot Act. You know, everyone's a suspect. That'll give them not the ability to really uh, uh, turn, up, turn the screws. And they had had the Iran thing ready to go. The yes. Iran story trickled out afterwards weekly. Like they were like, oh, and by the way, I guess Iran wanted t an attempt on Trump's life or is right. going to in the future you now. We're like, focus wait a away minute. from what actually happened, though. Right. I mean, now when you look up Trump assassination attempt, a lot of headlines are that instead of uh, crooks shooting Trump in the ear and then never uh, us never getting an explanation from the Secret Service. It seems well, just clear that uh, what seems like the clear, obvious thing is that there was some sort of plan to assassinate the former president and then blame it on Iran and get us into they're, a war. They're with Iran. talking more today about a line that Trump supposedly said in Charlottesville, then the fact that one of the major presidential contenders and a former president was just almost murdered. You and know? I heard and someone actually was killed. Well, and yeah, one of yeah. the emphasis yep. tonight at the Two DNC- people critically injured. Yes. One of the emphasis tonight at the DNC is victims of gun violence. Like, are they gonna bring Trump out on stage? <laughs> Probably he's, not. He's the special guest. You know why they want Iran too so bad? It's because of the Gulf of Aden. If you look on the map, it's real apparent why. They took Kuwait in the 90s. So they, they that's where they, they basically seized access to the Persian Gulf from Iraq. They took it and they made Kuwait whenever they made it. And so that's the American piece. And then they ship into the Persian Gulf and then it goes through the Gulf of Aden. But Iran, that's, Iran can block off the Gulf of Aden at any moment. Then we can't get our oil into the Indian Ocean. So we need that. You got Saudi Arabia no, I, there. I, is, it is, it is it Aden or Aden? Uh, Aden? Uh, either, but it's very far away from Iran. No, it's bordering it, man. No, it isn't. You're talking about the Gulf of Oman. Oh, Oman. Okay, thank you. The Gulf of Oman. Is that what you meant? Yeah, yeah. It goes Persian Gulf, Gulf of Oman, but that, but that the doesn't... Indian Ocean. So Iran's basically bordering it and patrolling the Gulf of Oman. If they shut it down, we can't get our Kuwaiti oil into the Indian Ocean. And right. That's a big problem for the American war machine. I think you got your regions mixed up, but you are thank correct. Thank you so much. Ku Kuwait through the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman can get out into the into the uh, Arabian Sea. Yeah, and so they've got, that's why we're allies with Saudi Arabia, probably, is because it protects not only the Suez Canal, but the Persian Gulf acts, oil access. And then Iran's just there, like a thorn, literally in the side of the Gulf of Oman. And, and let's also point out that Iran is Iran because the, the Shah was overthrown because the U.S. is like, okay, go overthrow the Shah. Thanks for checking out this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel, and we will see you all there.